Uh, proud to be here, represent Troy University. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, media plays a very important role, and we don't take that lightly. So appreciate what y'all do, not only for Troy, but college football. Uh, appreciate the commissioner, Carl Benson, and his staff for this hosting this first class event. Um, our guys, quarterback Brandon Silvers, third-year starter, um, Mike linebacker Justin Lucas, um, proud to bring them here, two tremendous student athletes. A um, lot of optimism at our place. It's it's football season, ready or not. Uh, I don't I don't know where all the time went, but it's uh, we our kids report a week from today. Our first practice is a week from tomorrow, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, I looked at my calendar this morning. It's 20 months. I've been on this job for 20 months and accomplished a lot of a lot of very good things. Things we're proud of academically, community involvement. We've uh, brand new uniforms. Uh, I can go on and on. We've renovated our current facility down the road with a, with a north end zone project that we're excited about and uh, just a lot of optimism. We returned several guys from, from our team from last year, several starters, and we played well down the stretch last year, played our best football game in our last football game against Lafayette. So schedule, schedule is, uh, is, is, is friendlier than it was a year ago. Uh, we have two nationally televised games that we're excited about, and we open up. Uh, the season at home on September 3rd versus versus Austin P. One of six home games. So, with that, I'll I'll open it up to questions. What a senior experience! Uh, you know, sure. Well, we're going to look at our schedule. We play three non-conference games to open it up. We open up, like I said, against Austin P. We go to Clemson and play there in Death Valley for a 11:30 kick, second game. And then we play at Southern Miss in week three, and then we come home on uh, the 24th of September and play New Mexico State in our conference opener. So we're going to use those first three weeks uh, to get guys ready. We do have a lot of experience coming back. We have four senior linebackers in that front seven. Uh, we've got our defensive front, all guys that are, that are key players that have, that have played a lot of football. Probably even going to add another piece or maybe two to that front seven before we start practice uh, next week. But uh, Rashad Diller is a kid that can really rush the passer. He was preseason first team all conference, a guy that I think is ready to take that next step. He's going to fill the role uh, avoided by Tyler Roberts. So we've got to use this fall camp. We've got to be smart. Uh, a lot of the guys in that front seven, we know what to expect out of. We've got to get some of these younger kids ready. I think Zoe Bridges is a kid that maybe can, can move in that role and, and push and, and compete for playing time up front. And then we've got to find a fifth linebacker. Uh, I think Tron Folsom could be a guy that, that makes some noise early, early as a redshirt freshman. Yeah, that, I, we're going to start the year, and that's going to be our strength. And, and we're going to, as, as our playmakers on offense mature, we've got a lot of new faces on offense. As those guys mature at the quarterback and the running back positions, um, we'll take some stress off our defense. But early in the year, they've got to be the strength. Uh, like Jeremy just said, we've got a ton of experience coming back in that front seven. Um, I'm excited about our first group of secondary. Um, Chris Weatherspoon is a kid that we added um, in the secondary from Heinz Community College, went through spring. Cameron Melton, transferred from Auburn, will start at a corner. Uh, Jalen Harris started last year after converting from wide receiver. And then uh, Sedaris Rooker returns as a sophomore who played a lot and started several games. So our front, our first group in the secondary is, is, is talented and we're excited about it. They're proven. Where we've got to find, we've got to find some key depth, and we've got to do that early in fall camp. Yeah, well, we're going to count on them, especially at the uh, running back and receiver position. At running back, the two kids that, that are two student athletes that are freshmen that are going to contend right away are B.J. Smith, um, a guy that had a great high school career at Stanhope Elmore. He's an all-purpose back. And then Jabir Fry, who's a scat back that's really fast, uh, a track track uh, guy that had a lot of success, a sub-10-5, 100-meter. They're going to compete right away. Uh, we've got to figure out early in fall camp, the first two weeks, what their strengths are, how they're going to be able to help us offensively because they're definitely going to play. And then a receiver, we got Emmanuel Thompson coming back. He's the leader of that receiving core, expecting him to take a big jump and, and potentially be an all-league type of player for us. And then there's some, there's some guys, Tavares McCormick, who's a junior college transfer, Darius Wesley, uh, who's a true freshman. 
Um, those are some guys, Sam Letton at that inside receiver spot, another true freshman. Those are guys that are all going to probably be in our two deep. I expect two true sophomores, DeAndre Douglas, Ishmael Salim, to make significant improvement off a, off a, 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 a really solid freshman season. But I, I think they'll be starters and, and be able to push for, uh, for big plays down the field. Well, I think you have to. I think to win it at any level, you got to have a strong defense, and you got to be strong up the middle. You know, in defense, you're talking about your interior D-line, linebackers, and it's safety. Uh, there's, there, I think overall in this conference, what you see is the the quality of coaching is 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 really gone gone up. You know, and you can look at the hires that are being made, and it's really impressive. And you can look at the defensive coaching staffs in our league. You look at our guy Vic Coning, who who's had multiple top ten Power Five defenses. You know, statistically, and in, in this league, I think you see it swung. I think it, it swung a little bit last year, where it, it started being as much about defense as it was offense. Well, I think so, and, and we've got a we're going to be uh, young and unproven up there. Um, Antonio Garcia, who was preseason first team all league, um, think he has an opportunity to be the one of the best, one of the premier offensive linemen in this league at left tackle. Um, we return our right tackle, Tyler Lassiter, and then at guard and at center, it's, 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 there's going to be competition in fall camp. It's some of our biggest questions. We've got some talent there, uh, there and some of them are freshmen and redshirt freshmen, which is a little bit scary, um, but we've got some better bodies, and, and we're talented there. Um, but we've got to find ways to protect them. We can't put them on an island. We've got to figure out ways that, that we can be balanced. Uh, we've got to mix up our screen game, our draw game, to keep people off balance. Um, but we're going to be a better unit overall than we can. We're going we're gonna to go on offense how Brandon Silvers goes, and especially early. That's how we did last year. When he played well, we played well. We scored 40-plus points, I think, three or four games out of our last six when he really got hot. Um, we're going to be more talented around him. We're going to miss Brandon Burks. We're going to miss Teddy Rubin. But as an overall offense playmaker-wise, we're going to be more talented. So hopefully, hopefully, I think Brandon's ready to take that next step. Uh, I believe that. I've been saying that since, uh, since the spring. He's maturing. He's developing. I think he has the ability to be an all-league player, and it's time. It's time. This is going to be his third-year starter, third-year starting uh, as our quarterback. So I'm excited to see see what he uh, what the season has in store for him. I think it's important that you look at the jump that Brandon made as a senior. You know, we're sitting here last year. I brought him, and and really, he 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 came to this event last year and was really unproven. Hit, had split time, uh, and, and then he comes out now. He's, he was the seventh seventh running back in Troy history to be a 1,000-yard rusher uh, because of the improvement he made really from his ju end of his junior year to the beginning of his senior year. And at running back this year, we return a guy that, that set the Troy uh, record for most touchdowns as a freshman. Um, and, and he's kind of been beat up since then. But he's, he's about 6'1", 225 pounds, a big kid. Uh, he's agile, and he's fully healthy now. And so – we're really counting on him to be the leader of that running back core. And is he different? Is he the same as Burks? Absolutely not. He's, he's different. He's a different style back. But I think they both can be equally as productive. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, and it, we may be a year away from, from being – where we were in 2009, all right, or 2008, we may be a year away. I think we are ready to take the next step and get to bowl eligibility. Uh, if you look at the returning starters, you know, um, when people start talking about sleepers, there's a couple different ways to look at it. One way is you look at it is you probably weren't as successful as you wanted to be the year before. So hopefully we won't be a sleeper moving forward. Uh, but the other thing is, is you return some, some talented players. In, in our league, uh, it starts with a quarterback. We're one of the few teams that return a proven starting quarterback. So that gives us a bump. Uh, we played well down the stretch. You know, we, we lost a triple overtime game at App State. We won 11 games. Uh, we won three of our last six. And then we lost four games by six points or less in our conference. So we were close. We were knocking on the door. What we've got to be able to do is take the next – to take the next step is really to, to win those close games. And I think a lot of that is just overcoming some adversity. Our schedule sets up much friendlier, friendlier than it did a year ago, which is going to help. Um, but our kids, that's our goal. You know, that's our goal. We, you know, we, we talk about it openly. We, we want to get back to a bowl game. It's been since 2010, and our fans, our fans are deserving and they're ready. Well, 
Well, uh, our commissioner's done a fabulous job with with five uh, tie-ins now, and and really some some really good events, you know, in, in some great cities and some location. So we'd love to. Uh, we're a long way from that, you know. I think we've got to figure out a way to we can get better on the offensive line. We got to we got to create some depth in the secondary. So we're a ways away from that, but but that's something that's that's definitely in the thoughts the thoughts of our players. Yeah. Well, I'll say this about the Sun Belt, then I'll talk about the Camellia Bowl. The Sun Belt, the level of play is so much higher than it was uh, in my first time here at Troy from 2006 to 2009. And I think a lot of that goes to the investment made by the athletic department, the conference is improving, and the coaching. The coaching at this level is really, it, in, our, in our league, is really improved. Um, the Camellia Bowl has been successful. A lot of credit to Johnny Williams and his staff. Johnny Williams can promote and he can sell. And, and uh, he was a big reason why Troy made this move and, and made the move so successfully uh, to Division One. So he's taken that same that same enthusiasm, that same spirit to the Camellia Bowl. Two great events, two sellouts. Um, and I thought the game last year was tremendous when Coach Satterfield and, and App won the game coming back. So uh, it's a game that that we definitely keep our eyes on. I know our fan base would would, would enjoy spending the week spending the week there. Other question? Thank you all. Appreciate your time.